Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download those in A4 or US letter and they accompany each step of this series to help you. There's a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time come exam day. So if you go to SharonBill.com you'll find it's all there. If you can like, subscribe and share that would be fab, please do. And now we're going to crack on with the last paper of 2018 practice papers for grade one. And so if you turn with me to page 16, we can make a start on question three. So I know I'm repeating myself, but do have a go of this on your own, first of all. It really doesn't matter if you go wrong. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. Write in pencil and then you can just rub it out and have another go. So I'm hoping you've had a go of this and now we'll look at this together. So the first part of question three, we're asked to add the correct clef to each of these tonic triads. So then of course C major, the bottom note, the tonic, the key note must be C. And for that to be the case, it must be treble clef and the tonic triad is the first, the third and the fifth. So it should be, should be C, E, G, which it is. And so C major, the tonic, must be in treble clef. So there we go. Let's look at this next one. So of course G major, the tonic, for the tonic triad at the base of the chord, the root of the chord, must be G. And for that to be the case, this needs to be the bass clef. We need a G, B, D. And we know that in the bass clef, good boys deserve football always, or green buses drive fast always, something like that. And so we know this is bass clef. And we've already answered the second part of the question where we're asked to write the letter names of each of the notes of the triad. So C major should be C, E, G. If you just want to visualise that on a keyboard, it's easier to see. The first, the third and the fifth, C, E, G. And in the treble clef we have middle C, D, E, F, G. So double check that. And of course for the bass clef it starts on a G building up first, third, fifth, G, B, D, which is what we've got here. So we've kind of already done that thinking. So there, that's job done. Now let's move on to the next question. So we're looking at semitones now. So we're asked to draw a circle around the higher note of this each of these pairs of notes in this first section here. And so we have here in the treble clef a D sharp and a D natural. Now we know that a sharp raises by a semitone and therefore the D sharp must be the higher of the pair. And if you want to just visualize that, we have a D and a D sharp. The sharp raises by a semitone. And so we can see that the sharp is the higher of the pair. So there we go. We know that a flat lowers by a semitone, so we have an E flat and an E natural in bass clef, E flat, E natural. A flat lowers by a semitone, and so the natural must be the higher of the pair. So here we have a C sharp and a C natural. We know that a sharp raises by a semitone, and so C sharp is a semitone higher than C natural. We have the same scenario here in the bass clef going from F natural to F sharp. We know that a sharp raises by a semitone and so that's the higher of the pair. And then here we're in the bass clef we have an A natural and an A flat. We know that a flat lowers by a semitone therefore the natural is the higher of the two. And now we have the similar sort of thinking but this time we need to draw a circle around the lower note of each of these pairs of notes. And so we know a flat lowers by a semitone, so we have a B natural or a B flat, and we know that the flat lowers, we can see B natural, B flat, we know the flat lowers by a semitone, and that's the lower of the pair, so we will circle that one. 
And so we know that if a sharp raises by a semitone, the natural must be the lower of the pair, so we know that F natural is lower than F sharp. We know that a flat lowers a bias semitone, so B flat will be lower than B natural. We know that C sharp is higher than C natural because C sharp raises, the sharp raises, and so the natural is the lower of the pair. And so here again, G natural is lower than G sharp. So that's that one. Soon done. Let's move on to the next question. Now we have some scales. So here you just have to know your key signatures and you have to know your scale structure here. We've got a few things to do here. First of all we need to name the key of each of these scales and then we also need to draw the brackets showing where the semitones fall in the scales. They've actually given us the first example of semitones so they've done the thinking for us actually. So even if you had a bit of a, a brain freeze you can work it out from here. So a scale must begin and end on its key note and we're in the treble clef and we're beginning and ending on C so we know that it must be C something. We know that it's C major because there are no sharps and flats and so we know that it's C major. So we know that because it begins and ends on C and also because there are no flats or sharps. Now the semitones here are written in fours and if we just look at the piano keyboard we know that notes three to four, one, two, three to four, five, six, seven to eight are the semitones in the scale pattern for the major scale. That is always the case, otherwise it wouldn't be the major scale. And so here, because the scale is descending, we are going backwards and we have here eight to seven, six, five, four to three. And so we can always just extrapolate that thinking to help us in the next one. So the next one we need to name the key of the scale first of all. So we can see it begins and ends on G in the treble clef. So we know that it's G something. We know that it's G major because G major has a key signature of F sharps. The fact that it's written as an accidental doesn't change the fact. We have a scale with F sharps in it so we know that it's G major. So that's that done. Now even if you weren't sure what the scale structure was, I'll just show you again, three to four, seven to eight, one, two, three to four, five, six, F sharp to G, seven to eight. We can see the semitones fall there, but of course we're in reverse, so we know it must be eight to seven, four to three. So even if you couldn't remember that, they've already given you the thinking behind it here. So eight to seven, six, five, four to three. That's it. And so this next one, so here we're in the bass clef, good boys deserve, it begins and ends on D, there's the D above middle C. And we know also that D major has F sharps and C sharps in the key signature. So we know that's correct on two counts, so it's D major. And then we know that the semitones are three to four, seven to eight, we're not going descending now we're ascending so we count upwards rather than backwards one two three to four five six seven to eight there we go then so that's the end of that question we'll look at the next question in the next video i do hope this is helpful to you i hope that you're enjoying it i certainly am enjoying working through it with you if you can give me a like that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated there's lots more to come Please also do visit SharonBill.com and have a browse around all the resource and information that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.